welcome to Reland Films. I do hope that you enjoy this uh, video. Don't forget, if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that bell. Um, like that you guys can get notified for anything and everything movie and series related here at Real In Films. I hope you enjoy this video. Good afternoon, Phil. How are you doing today? Doing good, John. So nice to meet you. So nice to meet you too as well. So today, Phil, we're going to be talking about uh, Five Pounds of Pressure, a film that uh, you directed. And I just wanted to start off like what got you interested in this project? Um, you know, I started writing it over 15 years ago. And um, I don't know what drew me to tell this story. Um, I, you know, I think I think I, I mean, I did grow up in a world like this. So I think inevitably your experiences as a writer kind of come through. Um, and, um, and I think, um, you know, I, I, I had a lot of um, extreme experiences with people who were on, you know, murdered or did the murdering and um and i think i've always had trouble with the strong emotions around it you know how to feel about it and how to have empathy or your anger or your you know hate all these things and i think that's what kind of drew me my own kind of investigation or own curiosity or own struggles with trying to understand and, and put it into some sort of context i think um weight on me i think okay and um i probably probably i don't know if it's uh fully updated but i do see that your most recent work as a full-length film was the truth about lies now yeah. you now you're now you're um promoting uh five pounds of pressure why why so the gap is not that much is around four years but why so long to do another feature film a full-length film just takes time to, um, you know, it's hard to make films, you know, I mean, um, I'm always out there trying to get projects made, you know, this project I had before the truth about lies and many times thought it was going to happen and it, um, fell apart, you know, and then, um, and then before COVID, you know, I think COVID, um, you know, made this project take longer. Um, to get off the ground. And it's just very difficult um, to get films made. And um, and it's such a challenge and it's such a Herculean task to um, go out there and try to get the support and the money. You know, it's 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 an expensive game to try to make movies, you know. So, um, you know, it's it's it takes a, a lot of time and a lot of work sometimes. Um, you know, I hope it's not doesn't take as long next time, but who knows? And I I did notice that most of I I would say all of all of them right all of your work you're the writer is and um and director is it something that you like to do do you like to tell your own stories I do I mean I'm I'm not a um opposed I mean there's a, another project I'm trying to do that I am not the primary writer on but I I do like um writing I love writing I love creating a story um, and pursuing something that excites me. Um, I love stories that give me kind of a view into what it means to be human from different angles, you know? Um, so, um, you know, I love writing and um, I don't know how much I love writing when I start because I'm just standing at empty pages and it's torture. So, but, uh, but I do love having written um, <laughs> and um and and I and as a director, it it gives me, um, because I wrote it, I, I feel that I understand it so deeply that that is, uh, um, it gives me uh, added insight into the the project. And how was it making the film? Because I do, I do see that there is a lot of like. Uh, the film is very, very based on like inside the city. And were there any challenges in, in it? Because I know that uh, you have, uh, it's the city, a lot of sound, a lot of um, probably the weather's not always in on par with the day that you're filming, but how challenging was to bring this film through flourishing? Um, it was extremely challenging. 
in infinite ways in every direction. <laughs> um, and uh, I could just imagine the producers, if they hear of this interview, laughing right now, because, you know, knowing uh, how hard of a task we all had to get this thing together. Um, and yes, on, on set, it was very challenging. I mean, we shot um, it in the UK and in, in Manchester um, for New York. So there's challenges, little challenges every day, even having the right cars on the right side of the road, you know, and, and, and doing all of that, things you wouldn't have to think about if we shot in New York that you would, um, that we had. So, so, but I think any film you're faced with an insurmountable mountain of problems every day. <laughs> and as a director, you are navigating and finding ways to make those small compromises that sometimes even work out better than you hoped. Um, and, but at the same time, you're still trying to protect the heart of the film that you're not compromising the actual film. And so that's uh, kind of the director's job to keep your eye on the, you know, the, the, the end goal of, of where, what you're trying to achieve. One of the things that I um that I I liked about the film is that there is this uh not to give like too many details but there is a starting scene where you see our 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 hero we would say uh Luke Evans character and he is with I uh, would say the parole officer and there's already like the parole officer is already bashing him saying that yeah you're not gonna make it like you're, in a week you're gonna be out I like how 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 you uh, you embraced that scene so much in in that in real life that actually happens was it that one of your like most focused points on showing off the type of character that is uh Luke Evans in this film you know be um, in in the the day to day basis um you know i don't i don't i mean I, I, that particular scene, I remember um, meeting, I, I wanted it to be authentic. So I did meet with a real parole officer and I did want to understand, you know, what is, what, here's my situation. What does that last meeting look like? You know, what, what are you saying? What do you, you know, and, um, and, and I remember that a lot of the things that are in the script are things that uh, we talked about, you know, the attitude, just what you're saying, you know, a lot of times these parole officers, Kind of feel like well you know i'll see you you know they, they don't believe they're gonna you're gonna make it and they're not cheerleading you on you know um and that's just the con the obstacles i mean someone who even does their time especially with a crime like adam committed you know there there's never people who who know it they're never it's not like you've ever really paid the price for that in many people's eyes you know um so even if you've done your time I have a friend who who went through something similar and did 10 years. And when he came out, every you know, he'd get a job. And when they'd find out his past, they'd, you know, get rid of fire him. And it's like, you know, so how is this guy supposed to work his way back in society? He's done everything. He's, you know, he paid his time, but you know, there really is no end to the price that you pay. And I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I just think that's reality right um for all of us things we've done doesn't mean sometimes you can't escape the things you've done no matter how hard you try yeah i completely understand so i wanted to to ask um uh, how is it uh oh, how was it uh working with the cast and and your crew uh because i do i do have i did notice that there's a lot of familiar faces that we've seen in in the big screen or in other streaming platforms, but how was it to work with um, all of these uh, stars? Um, amazing. I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, uh, it, it, the best thing you can imagine is what it was like. I mean, Luke is unbelievably um, talented and generous. I mean, he's worked on huge movies with the biggest movies, with the biggest directors in the world and was still humble enough to, uh, work on my small movie, you know, with my, you know, little bit of experience, you know, um, that just shows the uh, integrity that he has and the generosity he has of, as an actor. And he gave it, uh, you know, his all like he does on every performance. And, 
Um, and Rory Culkin, I, it was a dream for me to get him for this character. Um, I loved, uh, I saw him uh, in um, Lords of Chaos, which is an amazing performance. And he brought so much empathy to a character that is very, is, is very unlikable character, just like uh, challenges that my character, Mike, would have and I thought he would be perfect. And so I was thrilled that he decided to do the film and we had such a great relationship. And Alex Pettifer is, uh, you know, un amazing and Rudy Pankow, Stephanie Leonardis, I love her performances and Savannah is great and Zach Adams. These are, I was just thrilled with all of their performances. I can't say enough about them. There, is, there, is there any like scene of the film or moment that uh you take with you like in the day-to-day -day basis like there was something that something happened funny or not that you just keep reminding yourself and it makes you laugh or just you know brings brings you joy um well the whole experience brings me a lot of joy just the fact that we finished it <laughs> you know um, is, is uh, a miracle um but i mean seeing you know um I actually you know there's a, a a scene that I a few scenes that I I love like when when Mike is going into the bodega to to rob a bodega and I loved that scene and we had so much fun filming that I remember talking with uh, Rory and being like oh what if you know what if Mike can't do it you know he gets in and it's like almost like you're gonna jump in a a cold pool of water or something you know you can't you you're like get cold feet and you're like, wait a second, I need more time. And, and we played with that and that's what's in the film. And I love, you know, him procrastinating, trying to get up <laughs> his courage. I just thought that was uh, so Mike. And we, we were having so much fun doing that scene. And, um, you know, and, and also uh, I loved um, Luke, the scene in the, the uh, AA meeting, you know, when he's telling his story, that's all one take. Um, wow. And uh, you know, I, I, you know, wanted to do this slow push in and, you know, um, and our uh, DP, Sarah, did an amazing job, you know, navigating that beautifully uh, uh, composed shot and the lighting and the feel. And then Luke just giving, you know, I think we only did that three times um, and just the emotion he brought to it at the right time. I, I just, you know, that that's something I really love uh, that particular scene. Uh, and I love the the scene with uh, Rory and Alex, um, you know, Mike and Left when they're having their big confrontation. There's so many scenes that I, <laughs> I really enjoy, you know? No, I imagine. So uh, this would be my final question, uh, Phil, for you. Uh, if you could describe five pounds of pressure uh, in one word, how would you describe it? Uh, I'll tell you how I would like people. I would like uh it to be described as powerful that's what i would like <laughs> okay <laughs> i would like it to be you know i mean i would love that um but i i i hope it's powerful i hope it's authentic and i hope it's um in enlightening of some type you know i hope it's i hope it's fun i hope it's a, a, a good experience to watch the film that's amazing. That's a lot of words. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's stopped. okay. Don't worry. No worries. So, <laughs> Phil, thank you for giving us the time to talk about five pounds of pressure. And I hope to see you once again or one more time or a couple of times here uh, for any other projects that you have. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So nice to meet you. Thanks. Same here. Bye-bye. <laughs>